What's going on, peoples? So today, I'm going to talk about port work and uh, how you at home can cut your ports safely without uh, creating too much headache and damages by uh, doing the wrong port and wrong port shape. I have a rear iron. This is a S613B rear iron used middle iron brand new 13B S6 series and a 13B rotor a side seal a little uh, screwdriver indicator I'm going to use to point things out and a caliper so uh, I'm going to port do a port job on this middle iron for a customer so when I first start to do a port I pretty have some uh, basic measurements that I use to uh, to gauge the size of the port and what port shape I'm going to use uh, let me zero this thing out all right so the key to a uh, simple headache free minimal damage port is to focus on the closing edge and the opening edge because the duration of the intake opening is what's what it will indicate how much air fuel will be allowed in the engine in the time that the intake is open so right now we have a duration of the size that comes from the factory in order to get more fuel and more air we can go to a large port or play it safe and cut your port so it can close later here and open a little bit early now when I cut my ports and throughout the years I've cut different types of ports and uh, came to the conclusion that uh, some ports are better and some ports are not so good based on uh, their shape and size so the biggest mistake you can make is when cutting your port is to remove the the bridge so this is what i'll call the bridge area over the port when you port your your engine you would you would want to cut at least the least amount of material from your bridge so on a middle iron you can cut into the bridge a good amount before you get into the uh, red zone what I would call it the red zone is the supporting bridge for the corner seal oh, fucker stop. Where is it here? Come on. All right. so you do not want to cut your bridge where you are removing material from the support surface of the corner seal riding on this surface and I'm going to get into the details to why removing material a lot of material in this area will wreak havoc and create a lot of problems in a, in a rotary engine <clears throat> so when I cut my uh, metal iron port I use the measurements off the secondary port bridge length so up top at the at the bridge here we have about a let's say 13 as you go to the bottom it's actually about a 13 and a half boom all right so 13 and a half 13 up top when i cut the middle iron i use a 13 and a half bridge so i would take the 13 and a half and scribe my uh my plate at 13 and a half so let's put this down lock it up all right so i would mark it i'll put some dye and mark it but you kind of get the idea and we can get a, uh, a little scribe on there so 
that is the safe zone right here. This is the red zone. Removing just up to the line, you are fully supporting your corner seal based on the factory spec, on the factory port uh, dimensions. So doing this way, you will uh, minimize a lot of headaches because you can achieve a lot of power just by going up and going down and not cutting side to side. You know, bigger port not necessarily means more fuel and more air because you are still restricted by the intake runner size. Uh, the, uh, the runners inside the intake, unless those are ported and enlarged to compensate and match your monster port here, you're literally sucking through a straw and trying to feed a garden hose. So it's, it's, it just makes no sense. So in, in reality, it is the duration that is open, sucking through a straw and achieving the same amount of air and fuel versus a big port and creating nothing but headache with uh, removing the the support surface on the bridge for your uh, corner seal. Okay, so that is standard for all ports. Let's say I am porting the, the rear iron. I do not cut the bridge at all. The bridge remains the same and I do not remove any material on this area right here. I go down about two to three mils and then I go up four mils for a street port, six mils for a large street port, and eight mils for like a race port. And then, you know, if you want to get creative and keep going, that's up to you. But that's kind of how I gauge my, my ports. And then I clean it up, make it nice and, and clean inside. And uh, so that way air and fuel has a nice smooth transition, uh, a big, bevel on the closing edge that way uh the seals have a transitional surface to uh on the closing edge all right so here's the issue with cutting ports into the uh supporting surface of the corner seal once you start making the the port much larger and removing material, the side seal has less and less surface to support itself inside the rotor. <clears throat> so as it rides along, it will fall off its axis just ever so slightly, but it only falls off its axis if the rotor is old and the clearance is between the corner seal to the rotor because the rotor is old it has a more more clearance therefore the side seal has room to move off its 90 degree axis so 90% of the time most people will have a used rotor with a new seal a used rotor is not going to be the same clearance is a brand new rotor and a brand new seal so you're gonna have the uh, variation of having a seal that has just a little more play than brand new so if you remove the the supporting surface on the iron your size seal will have a tendency to move off its 90 degree axis but it only moves off its 90 degree axis at the port opening and closing because you do not have this full support to keep it and it's 90 degrees. So as it rides along and the surface is removed, the seal, the corner seal will fall off its axis and drag, you know, let's say it's 90 and drag in this fashion. Now we have a sharp corner that is always hidden and 
under load and under pressure at the closing edge of the port. That will wear the seal down uh, incorrectly and also tiny, tiny uh, specks of metal will start to fall and shear off the corner seal. The corner seal, it is a powdered material that is the factory seal that has been pressed into shape, cooked, and heat treated. So as this seal breaks down, it breaks down in fine metal particles. Now that fine metal particles will get picked up by your side seals, your oil, and then it'll become a paste. That paste will turn into like a lapping paste. And then you would get premature wear on all your seals and your irons because of this uh, combination of port. So, to minimize the damage, to minimize the headache, and to have a uh, stress-free, easy running rotary engine that has a larger port, my advice to you is to stay away from the uh, the bridge and uh, keep it to a maximum size of the factory on the uh, secondary uh, ports if you are cutting the primaries. <clears throat> so throughout the years, I mean, I've made the mistake where, you know, I've cut bigger ports and bigger shapes and different shapes, but making those mistakes and seeing all the variations of damages and analyzing why and how I've come to the conclusion that the safest and the easiest is to cut up the closing edge and to cut down side to side, stay away from it. And that will uh, minimize any engine damage and uh, you know you can use older rotors that uh, don't have a perfect uh, corner seal uh, clearances. And uh, I lost my track of thought. Oh yeah, so this here, all this information that I just shared with most of you, all of you, it is in no way to uh, argue uh, with any other so-called expert it is not uh, you know the right way to pour but this is my way and based on all the mistakes I've made in the in the past <clears throat> that I've come to this conclusion and every time I have ported in the fashion that I just shared with you I've never had an issue I've never had an engine get chewed up or have any any issues whatsoever so i hope the the information is useful and it makes sense to all of you uh, if you have any questions i will try my best to uh answer them but uh for most part i think it's uh pretty simple and uh it should make sense to everybody so thanks for watching uh and until next time, peace out.